Hi there. As promised, I'm going to show you how to do my power cake. Now I've got a three-tier white iced fondant and cake behind me. It was pinned out just in corn flour. No Crisco or vegetable shortening, so we haven't waterproofed the surface of the fondant, so it'll take the colour as well. Now, the black that I'm going to be using, I'm going to be painting on, is going to be approximately five parts of this rainbow metallic black with one part of this Americolor black. Now, the reason why I do that is this is nice and thick and it holds its black, whereas some of the blacks, they dissipate and go a little bit red and some of the blacks dissipate and go a little bit green. So this keeps it nice and black for a long period of time. After I put my dots in, after I put my lines in, I'm going to go on with four colors. I'm going to go on with a bright purple, a dark blue, a neon or electric blue, and then a neon or electric yellow. Now, that's how I achieve the green in the power cakes. So we don't actually use green, we use the yellow and the blues that are already there. So stick with me and we'll see how we go. Cheers. Okay, so this is my three tier white iced fondant and cake. Now, it was done about four hours ago and it's still quite soft. I can still push my fingers into it. And that's the perfect stage to do what I wanna do next. So I'm just gonna get a glass of water. And now if, if you're not confident enough to do it, you could go in with an edible pen and just draw where you want to put your, your circles, which are gonna mimic the holes in the abalone shell or the power shell. And I'm just gonna get my finger and some water, not too wet, and I'm just gonna start rubbing it on the surface of the fondant. Now, I'm gonna apply a bit of pressure. And I'm just gonna start creating a dip with my finger. Now, I know it's gathering around like a crater, that's exactly what I want it to have happen. So that's my first dot. Now a lot of these holes or dots in your abalone shell or power shell are actually ovals, not circles. So that's one. So I've got a little paint tray, I'm just going to put this down and I'm going to put approximately five parts of the rainbow metallic black. to one part of the Americola black. It's a pretty grubby job. Now I could actually either wear gloves, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to put my finger in that and bring those two colours together. Now I've tried all different ways to try and get these holes black, and I found that the easiest way is just to use some of this colour on the tip of your finger. So I'm just going to go in now and just move my finger around gently and you'll find that it perfectly fills in those craters. Okay, so we have our nice thick food colouring in here. Now if you don't have the rainbow metallics to achieve this thick food colouring, you can just take a normal black airbrush colour, sit it in its tray and leave it for a couple of hours to dehydrate. You can rehydrate it with some water or just catch it when it's on the brink of setting up. So we want it nice and thick. Just got a, a number zero brush here. It's quite long, brand new, and all the, t all the bristles are nicely sort of tucked together so I can get a nice fine point there. Bringing my hands together and my elbows into the side to create that triangle. More support for your paintbrush with a triangle than just trying to freehand paint it with one hand. So I'm bringing my hands in together now and I'm just going to painstakingly paint some black lines all through my cake. Now these are key, these are going to be the lines that I follow with the airbrush colour later on. So if you're not familiar with the shapes, um, just freeze this video and you'll be able to see what I've done and just try and replicate that or just draw it on a piece of paper, stick it on the bench as a piece of reference material so that when you paint yours onto your cake, you sort of you, you get one shot at it because black's pretty unforgiving. So I'm just going to go for it now and I'm just going to take it nice and easy. Not too many lines, I don't want it to look like a road map, but just enough lines to, um, by the time I've put the food colouring on the top of it to actually give it that effect of a power shell. Okay, so I've done up this sample board here of how the lines 
are associated with the dots. Now it's a stylized pattern, um, it's not exactly like an abalone or a power shell, but it's enough with the colors to be identified as one. So it's a little bit abstract. Now the reason why I'm showing you this board is because the way the colors go on is the most important thing. Now obviously if you mix blue and yellow together you're going to get green. Sometimes if you mix a purple together with a blue it comes out a little bit brown or dirty. So um, we're going to lay these colors on. Now if every line has a left hand side and a right hand side, all the four colors that I'm going to apply are going to be applied on the right hand side of those lines. So I'm not going to put my dark blue, my purple sorry, in here. I'm going to put my purple and travel around the outside of this black line here or the inside of this black line here. I'm going to go purple, then I'm going to lay on blue, then I'm going to lay on neon or bright blue, and then I'm just going to touch parts of it with yellow to bring out the green. I'm going to show you on the board, and then I'm going to show you quickly on the cake. This is going to be a lot better reference for you than the cake because this will make a lot more sense because it's flat and you can see exactly what I'm doing. Now my airbrush is sitting on around about 15 psi, and I'm just going to practice first on the bench. Everything's coming out alright. Now I'm going to travel on the right hand side of each one of those lines. So, so right hand side of these lines and then the left hand side sorry, of these lines. So we get that transition of colour moving from the centre to the outside. So we're going to be putting purple down the outside, then the blue, then the neon blue down each side of those lines. So, okay, so I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to lay and travel around the inside. Now I'm about 10 centimeters away from my work and I'm at a 90 degree angle to my work as well so I'm not going down or up or anything, I'm aiming straight at it. Hands together, elbows into the side, that's how we airbrush. Pushing down to initiate the air, pulling back to initiate the food colouring and we're getting a really even application of the purple colour onto the work. Take your time, try not to stop and start. So I've travelled down the right hand side of that black line and now I'm going to travel down that left hand side of this black line. Now I'm going to go over that purple with a darker blue. I'm going to hit the purple exactly in the same space on the right hand side and on the left hand side but I'm going to let it just drift over into the white voids between the two lots of purple. Okay, so what I also like to do at this stage is just let a bit of this blue drift down one half of the dots. Now you can choose the left hand side or the right hand side, it doesn't matter. So I'm just going to add a bit of blue around the right hand side of those dots there. So I've just layered on some blue there. So the next colour that I'm going to layer on, so it goes purple, blue, is a neon or electric blue. Now, you can't pull a power cake off without a neon or electric blue. It brings all of the colours together and homogenises the transition between the purple, the dark blue, and then the light blue fills in a lot of the white space. So I'm going to start travelling down the right hand side of this blue, and I'm going to let it completely drift into that white void now. Not all the way into it, but certainly cross over into the white. On the left hand side I'm going to let it drift into the white voids. So we've got the yellow in our airbrush now, and now we really have to use restraint. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to travel down probably about 11 o'clock of each one of those circles. Put the emphasis there and just let it drift off into the white spaces around the black dots. So I'm not too heavy handed, just really gently. Just let that come out. And you can just see that it's, it's blending with the blue and going a little bit green. You can bring it back over into the blue if you want, around about 12 o'clock now, and it just makes it pop. I also like to put this yellow, or make it slightly more green, just in these little shapes that I do. So I'm just going to add a little bit of there, a little bit in there, ever, ever so lightly. I'm certainly not packing in the colour. So my little compressor is going to be working over time now. I've cranked it all the way up to 40 psi. Now the pearl sheen is a bit more viscous than normal food colouring and I really want to push it out. Now it's a light spray, I'm certainly not directing it at any one place. It's just a coating over the whole thing. So.
that's pretty much it. So just a recap, so the black is five parts metallic black from Rainbow Dust and one part Americolor black mixed together, nice and thick, painted on. We're going to follow it with four colours in a certain order. We're going to follow it with purple, dark blue, neon or bright blue, and then finish it off with a little bit of yellow just to highlight it. We're going to wash the whole thing with Americolor Pearl Sheen just to add that mother of pearl look to it. And that's pretty much it. Practice. It'd be nice if we could do this all straight away, holding an airbrush in our hands, but we can't. You have to learn to control it first. So practice on pieces of paper, practice on sheets of icing, and then when you become confident enough, move on to a cake. I hope that helps.